All right, Shalom. I'm the brother Shemashwam. Shalom, Mr. Brother Nechamu. We're going to first off by giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rechak Adash. We want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Shalom, Wa Barakim, Lahabakari, which means peace and blessings to the elect. And Lord's will, this be an edifying video. And, um, you know, just meditating on just salvation and deliverance. And, uh, you know, in Wisdom of Solomon, it talks about the strangeness of the salvation. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and we just want to get a little bit of uh, education on the salvation, how we're going to be delivered, man. Yep. So go ahead. This is Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. And we know this, man. That's why we always prophesy the fact that two thirds, all right, of the Israelites in America, they're going to die. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how are they going to die? Get Malachi 4 real quick. Okay. Malachi 4 and verse 1. Yep. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. All right. And that's the day. That's the climax. That's that's the, the end of end that we that we're waiting for, that we're proclaiming unto the people, which is that day of fire. And yep. the way that the Lord is going to set this earth on fire all right, is going to be through World War Three. All right. And those those uh, thermonuclear missiles that's going to be shot off from the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. OK. And those missiles, the scriptures talk about how those missiles are going to make the earth real to and fro like a drunkard the earth is going to shake there's going to be a great earthquake from those missiles hitting all right but also that fire is going to come through yahweh shai and his chariots and his and his hosts of, of angels and they're going to come and they're going to send through laser beams through those chariots which people call ufos mm -hmm. so read through that whole verse come it says and all the proud yeah and all <clears throat> and all that do wickedly shall be stubble that's the two-thirds of course that's esau edom he's wicked and he's proud and the other nations they got no hope but that's also talking about two-thirds that's how they're going to be cut off and die all right through that fire okay if they make it to that point mm -hmm. continue finish the verse con it says uh it says and the day come it says in the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the lord yahweh the hashem yahweh shy of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. That's right. So two thirds of our people are about to get burnt up, man. It's about to be a sore destruction. All right, and all of America is going to be wasted. There's not going to be any any city or or place left to inhabit. Yeah. All right. So that's why when the Lord comes, we're in America. When the Lord comes, we got hope and pray the Lord delivers us and takes us with him. All right. It's going to be a very uh, scarce salvation man it's gonna be the righteous scarcely gonna be saved and we're gonna get that scripture just read verse two and then go back to zachariah okay verse two but unto you that fear my name that's right that's the elect all right that fear the name the scriptures say the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom man all right and in one way a man fears the lord you see him going out to the highways and the byways you see him making his videos you see him doing the things that please the lord all right, so the elect, the, the, the brethren that's, that's, that's fighting for salvation, that fear the name of the Lord, what's going to happen? Continue. It says, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings? That's right. That's our Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He's going to come with his wings, those chariots, and we're going to be delivered, man. And we're going to be healed, all right, because we're going to be changed. The scripture is saying, the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. And we're going to go from these wretched, inc wretched corruptible bodies and we're going to be put into incorruptible bodies. We're going to have new flesh. And all the ailments and the disease and the problems and the, and the heartache that we go through now in these chains of darkness is going to be done away with, man. All right, but that's 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 when that fire comes, man. Once that fire is coming, the Lord's going to deliver us through it and we're going to be saved, man. But it's going to be a very uh it's going to be a very uh dramatic uh salvation, man. It's going to be very He's scarce, as the scriptures say. Right. So write in there or finish it out. Okay, it says, <clears throat> And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. That's right. We're going to flourish in the kingdom, man. The kingdom says that, the Lord says that we're going to, uh, 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 matter of fact, get Isaiah 16 and 22. Instead of quote, you'll get it. Okay. 16, 22. This is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. And it reads, 
a little one shall become a thousand and a and a small one a strong nation i the lord will hasten it in his time that's right so the lord's gonna make us flourish man we're gonna become a nation we're gonna actually grow mm -hmm. and, and build all right and inhabit eternity so we got a lot of good things to look forward to but we gotta get through this great tribulation that's coming that's right. and then after we make it through all the great tribulation after we get through the the famine and the, and the race wars and the pestilence and the persecution then we gotta get delivered up by the chariots man we gotta get delivered from that catastrophic fi uh, fiery destruction that's about to come mm -hmm. so finish Zechariah 13 okay. because this whole video is meditating on Zechariah 13 and 9 all right, but fin read, start at 8 again. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third part shall be left therein. The third part shall be left therein, man. Get Luke, I think it's 12 and 51. All right. And so, it's, it's, it, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy out here, man. Right. This is Luke chapter 12 Verse 51 I think that's it Yeah that's it uh, Suppose ye that I am come To give peace on earth I tell you nay But rather division That's right You know like the brother said man It's going to be a split A split division A clear cut distinguished Distinguished Distinguishing attributes That's going to lead you to the election, the chosen of the Lord, and the uh, the two thirds, which are going to be slated to be cut off and destroyed, man. Yeah, but go ahead and read forty nine is what I wanted. Forty nine. Yep. Okay. This is verse forty nine. It says, "I am come to send fire on the earth." That's right, and that's how the two thirds going to be cut off, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's already going to be fire on the earth, man, from those missiles, man. Yeah. You know, and from just the the the, the complete destruction of this place, man. Yep. Continue. And what will I if it already be kindled? That's right. And the Lord's going to finish it off. All right. But we're going to be left therein, man. Yeah. We're going to be delivered at the very last minute. So go ahead and finish Zechariah 12. Because okay. Apostle Dari did a video a, a while back, maybe a few months ago, just talking about how we're going to get delivered at the last second, man. All right. Mm -hmm. And it's going to feel like he might not get delivered, but then the Lord's going to come and save us, man. All right, so finish that out, verse verse 9. Con, Zechariah 13, verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire. That's right, the Lord says he's going to bring us through the fire, man. All right, we're going to get that in Revelation, but we're in the flesh, man. That's going to be a very, uh, you know, frightening, like, intense, I would say more so, a very intense feeling. Yeah. You know? I'll speak for me personally. I'm pretty sure a lot of Jake don't really particularly like roller coasters, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might get on it and you might do it because we were amongst these heathens and you know what I mean? We did it. But, you know, Jake naturally has a has a, has a fear of, of heights. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're about to get pulled all the way up, sucked up into the, into the clouds and, and escaping death. That's going to be intense, to say the least, man. Yeah. Finish uh, that out, though. Kind of says... And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai is my power. That's the that's the marriage, man. And uh, that's Lonies that says we're going to be forever with the Lord. In those clouds, man. So we're about to be married and joined unto the Lord. We're gonna call on the Lord and say He's our power, and the Lord's gonna hear our hear our prayers and say that we're His people, man. We're gonna forever be with the Lord. So that's an exciting thing as well. But go ahead and get First Peter's four, okay. and eighteen. This is First Peter chapter four, verse eighteen. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly? And the sinner appear. So the ungodly and the sinners, those that know not the most high, those that fear not the most high, they're gonna be utterly wasted. Alright, but the point I wanted to bring out was the righteous is scarcely gonna be saved. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna scarcely be saved, man. Yeah. 
Go ahead and get Psalms 91. Yeah, and just um, harp on your, the point you just said. The, the righteous is going to be hardly saved. It's going to be a hard... It's going to be hard to see salvation in that day. We're going to be surrounded by so many people that we know, you know, that we've seen. And this life that's going to be, be just be getting slaughtered, man, out here. And it's going to it's going to make a, a thought of doubt, a spirit of doubt on our flesh, you know. But we're going to overcome. We're going to overcome that spirit of, of flesh, man. But we're still going to have to battle with with those particular spirits, man, those demons. Okay. Yep, and all, the scriptures also say, "Then it shall be known who are my chosen in that day," mm -hmm. because those, because we're gonna be delivered, man. We're gonna be escaping death. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We're gonna be getting delivered out of so many different uh, things mm -hmm. that's gonna take the two thirds up. Exactly. You know. Yeah, and it's gonna be a, a small number, like the Lord said. It's gonna be uh, a a third, a third that's gonna be elected, that's gonna be saved out of the, the destruction. So, All right, the majority, two thirds, is not going to be saved, you know. That's right. He says Psalm 91. 91, Con. Start from the top. Con. We might jump around a little bit, but we'll start from the top. Con. Psalm 91, verse 1. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's right. The secret place of the Heavenly Father is this truth, man, this knowledge. Mm hmm. We're the only ones that, that know the Lord's name and, and serve the Lord and, and learn of the Lord. It's a secret thing. It's blinded to the majority of our people, man. Yeah. All right, but it says we shall dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, meaning the Lord is going to protect us, save us, and deliver us, man. That's right. Keep going. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power. In him will I trust. And that ultimate refuge place is going to be when the Lord actually beams us up into those chariots man yeah to to uh to be safe all right from that actual destruction that's going to come to pass that's right matter of fact uh, keep going this is verse three it says surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence that's right the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence is talking about uh, it's coming up. It's talking about you know the uh, the actual those missiles, man. Yep. You know it's gonna be very noisome. That the 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 it's gonna be extremely loud. It's gonna be a loud destruction, man. Yeah. Go ahead, and get Isaiah twenty six verse twenty. Yep. Twenty six and twenty. The last two verses, twenty and twenty one. Okay. All right. It says <clears throat> Isaiah twenty six twenty. Come, my people. Enter thou in, into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Talking about the chariots. The Lord's going to actually tell his people to come up. Mm -hmm. We're going to hide ourselves while the, while the earth is getting heated up by that right. fire. All right. Until that, until that destruction overpass, man. The Lord's going to really cover us and keep us safe, man. We're going to be praising his name. From the top of our lungs All right, watching that second death That lake of fire, man Keep going And we know the indignation is the uh, thermonuclear destruction Because of Isaiah 13 Yeah Alright, yeah. get that real quick okay. Isaiah 13 and read verse 5 Isaiah 13 and 5 Sorry, 4 Come, verse 4 It says the noise of a multitude In the mountains Like as of a great people a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. So the scriptures, the Lord is very poetic. The scriptures is the, the Lord in the scriptures is liking those missiles, those ICBM missiles to a to a great people. Alright, that makes a tumultuous noise. That's yeah. making a tumult. You know? It's gonna be very loud. The winds and you know, even before it hits. Okay. And the and it's the Lord. That's putting the spirit on, on Putin and all these different nations to rise up against Babylon to shoot those missiles. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord's will and it's going to be done. Oh, real quick, bro. If, uh, if we could get the scripture, um, this battle shall be fought with burning and fuel of fire. Come. You know? We'll finish, we'll finish verse 5 and we'll get that. Come. 
This is verse 5. It says, They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. You see that? So get it's Isaiah 9 and 5, what you want it. Okay. That's the that's the weapons of the Lord's indignation. Yeah. The uh the actual missiles, man. Yeah. And indignation is his righteous anger, and that's how the Lord is going to appease his wrath is through those missiles, man, that lake of fire, man. Because mm -hmm. the Lord is upset. Just like he was upset in the time of Noah by flooding the earth by water. Mm -hmm. He's upset, he's furious, and he's going to flood the earth by fire. Yeah. Yep, and this is another point that proves that these weapons, all right, the, the tool that the Lord is going to use is, in fact, the ICBM missiles, those nuclear uh, capabilities, man, okay? This is Isaiah 9 and 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire okay so all the wars you look back in ancient times they were fought swords uh you had um daggers okay and and shields a lot of a lot of noise all right close combat blood all right this war is going to be fought from afar contact contactless almost all right the only thing that's going to touch down all right and hit you are these nuclear warheads man all right, uh, and that's going to be ignited by the fuel, okay, that's going to be propelled from these nuclear missiles, all right, and the fire that's going to be issued from behind the missile, okay, and it can create a huge uh, bomb, a, a huge explosion, man, okay? Yeah, that's why the scriptures talk about in Joel how the, how the, uh, how the, uh, <laughs> um, the different um, missiles are likened unto men. Yeah. You know, running to and fro and, and climbing over walls. Mm -hmm. All right. Because the actual fighters in this war is going to be those missiles. Those That's are going right. to be the warriors. Yeah. You know, but okay. go ahead and uh, go back to Psalms 91. Yeah. Let's just get a couple more verses out of there um, and then get Revelation. We'll close out on, on that. Come. Go ahead and read verse. Matter of fact, we're just going to, you left at three, read four. Mm -hmm. We'll probably read down to like 10 or 11. Yeah, read verse 4. This is Psalm 91 and 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. That's right. The chariots, again, his feathers, healing in his wings in Malachi 4. Mm -hmm. That's how the, how the Lord's going to cover us from this destruction, because the only way to be covered from this destruction is those chariots, man. When Yahweh comes back with that host of heaven, man, and the whole earth see see those chariots. The scriptures say that this is the curse that covered the whole earth. The whole earth see those chariots in the sky. You going? We're gonna be begging the Lord, praying for the Lord, to, that we better. We're gonna be hoping our ass off that the Lord beams us up, man. Because that's the only safe haven. That's the only place of safety if you dwell in America. You know. Keep going. It says, verse five. No, no. So like I'm gonna read verse four again. It says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That's why we're diligent in his truth, man. That's our shield and our buckler, man. Yeah. All right, that's what we're going we're gonna to say to the Lord. Like, Lord, this is what we've been doing. We've been, we've been in your word. We've been proclaiming your word without stop. Yeah. Save us, Lord. And the Lord's going to do it, man. Because the Lord said, what? He's not a man which he shall lie. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, well, if we do these things, we shall not fall. That's and right. the Lord said he's never forsaken those that's called upon him in sincerity. Okay. Yep. And that's what backs up our sincerity. That's what backs up our faith. The scriptures say faith without works is dead. So we say we have faith and we have the works to back it up. That's right. Finish it. Uh, finish. This is verse five. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow by that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday all right we're not gonna be afraid of the destruction man we might feel crazy in the flesh but ultimately we're gonna know and, and hope and know and have confidence that the lord's gonna get us that's right keep going verse this is verse seven a thousand shall fall at thy side 
and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. When the Lord comes and deliver us, man, people going to be dying to the left and to the right of us by thousands, man, because they're going to get hit by those missiles, man. Yeah. But it's not going to touch us. And if, I, and if I could say, you know, even even um, in the process of, of time leading up to that great final destruction, the scripture had mentioned the uh, the pestilence that walk in darkness because you, you want to have those those uh, missiles, which is a form of plague and pestilence. OK, and they're going to touch down and penetrate this earth. But you're going to have uh, biological and chemical weapons of warfare, you know, such as coronavirus 19, for example. That's an example of a pestilence that we are not to be afraid of, man. And the in the coming greater diseases that's coming, man. That's right. Okay. Cause it's about to get far worse, man. Mm -hmm. A hundredfold worse, bro. That's right. There's gonna be so many different diseases out here. You're not gonna be able to talk about coronavirus. Yeah. It's that's gonna, that's be, gonna be forgotten. Yeah. You know. <laughs> exactly. There's gonna be so much stuff. Just read verse eight. Okay. Um, eight and nine. God, this is verse 8. It says, Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. That's right. And, hey, man, that's us actually beholding the wicked being burnt up and destroyed, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Get Psalms 37 real quick. Mm -hmm. Psalms 37 from the top. One and two. <clears throat> psalm chapter 37 and one. A psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. That's right. Because you could, right now, evildoers and workers of iniquity, if you look from a carnal eye, they might be doing better than us, man. They're probably making more money. They, they got a family and, you know what I'm saying? They're doing all these things. But the Lord said, don't get angry over them. You need to be envious of them. Mm -hmm. Continue. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither. As the green herb. And that's what it's talking about in Psalms 91. We're going to see the reward of the wicked, man. Yeah. Job says that the, the triumph of the wicked and the joy of the hypocrite is short, man. That's right. All right. So ultimately, we're going to win at the last. That's right. And that's the hope. But get Revelation 11 and uh, 12 and 13. God. Close out on that. This is Reve Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. That's right. And that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to come with a great shout. And Elisha and Kodash tell his people to come up. And the Lord's going to deliver us, man. Our enemies are going to behold us. That's right. Just like it said in Wisdom of Solomon 5, talking about how they're going, our enemies are going to see us get beamed up in those chariots, the strangers of our salvation. Mm-hmm. Verse 13. Verse 13, it says, In the same hour was there a great earthquake. Because that destruction, when those missiles hit, it's going to make those tectonic plate shifts. So there's going to be a great earthquake, man. Mm -hmm. The scriptures say what? It's going to reel to and fro. The earth is going to reel to and fro. Continue. Uh, and the tenth part of the city fell. And it says, And in the earthquake were slain of men. 7,000. That's right. So America's completely destroyed, and, and 7,000, which means a complete great number mm -hmm. of people going to die. Yep. That's right. It says, and the remnant were affrighted. See? And the remnant were affrighted, the elect. Lord, as well, we are the elect. Another name for the elect is the remnant, and it says we were affrighted because we're going to be scarcely saved, man. Mm -hmm. We're about to witness all this destruction and, and scarcely get up out of it, man. So we're going to be affrighted. On. It says, and gave glory to the power, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai of heaven. Call Allah Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, man. We're going right. to be praising the Lord. You know, we're going to be praising the Lord for getting us out of that, that tribulation, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's pretty much all I have to say. You got me like you said, bro, that was, that's it. You know, we're going to be scarcely saved. We're going to be affrighted, affrighted, okay? But we're going to give glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai for his mercy, man, and for his saving grace, his salvation. That's right. So, Lord's will is edifying. We'll give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Bashem Makakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom, Wabaraki, and Habakari. Peace and blessings to the elect.
Shalom. Shalom.